Hi guys, welcome to another edition of Yes, We're Here. With me is Michael Grady, Nets <laughs> reporter extraordinaire. Hello, my friend. How are you today? Good to be on with you, Nancy. Miss you for sure. It's good to be on with you. Right back at you. We're all a beautiful, big Yes family, and we're all thankful for that. That's for sure. We're going to jump into your basketball career. And, okay, we all know you're from Indiana. You grew up there, and you're a big Pacers fan. That stuff we know. But what people may not know is, may not know, rather, is that you're a big Michael Jordan fan. How does that jive? Yeah, you know, it's it's one of those things. I think it's funny. Um, over time, especially as you get older, Nancy, the people that you grew up watching, you just kind of put them on this pedestal. And as these younger guys come up and these great athletes come up, you know, right after Jordan, it was the Kobe fans who were saying he was as good as Jordan. And all of a sudden, I felt this loyalty to my generation and who I grew up. And so it was, no, 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 it's not Kobe. It's it's Jordan. And I had to see him a lot. You know, in that in that division, the Pacers would see the Bulls really often and of course Jordan was just I mean I mean he's the GOAT I, there's just there's nobody else on that level and so even as the LeBrons and other guys have come along I've still been very loyal to that uh, generation and that radio background I've had a lot of opportunities to argue with two minutes. <laughs> yeah I, I can just imagine because when I first heard that you were an MJ fan I thought Michael you must have taken a lot of grief for that. <laughs> <laughs> no you know I didn't I didn't mention it you know, I wouldn't mention it um, like publicly or in school or anything. I wanted the Pacers to be down the bowl, yeah. like every single time. It's just my respect for Jordan as a uh, his determination, his will to win, his commitment to excellence, um, all those things that we've been talking about. You know, Kobe uh, immediately following his passing. You know, Kobe got that blueprint from MJ, and it just set him apart from everybody else. That was a classic generation with a bunch of huge names. And none of them really got an opportunity other than Akeem Olajuwon in those, that like, couple-year gap where Jordan retired and then came back. There were a lot of great players during that generation who couldn't get a championship simply because of number 23. So I, even though I, I hated him for a stretch, Nancy, I couldn't help but respect him. And so all that considered, where do you stand on the LeBron versus MJ debate? Well, I look at it as in the same way I look at, you know, boxing. You know, there are going to be other guys that come along who may have a better skill in this area, or better skill in that area. Uh, LeBron, great passer, um, uh, can score with the best of them, has been consistent over the course of his career, 6'8", 250. So the relationship that I, I put, uh, pin it with boxing is pound for pound. You put Jordan 6'8", 250, you put Jordan at 6'8", 250, my goodness. What would, that, what would that comparison be? And then you get into intangibles, and that's where I get back to the whole determination, will to win, all those types of things that, again, LeBron is unbelievable. To say that LeBron is number two all time, that's a heck of a compliment. That's a heck of a compliment. For all the guys that have played the game, to say that one guy's number two all time is a heck of an accomplishment. But I can't put him ahead of Jordan because there are too many killer instinct, whatever you want to call it, intangibles that really separates him. That era, how physical it was. I'm sure LeBron would have adapted. But, Le but for Mike at his frame to go through the bad boy Pistons, even those Knicks teams as physical as they were, um, so many different teams that he had to go through and never saw a game seven in the finals, you know, never lost a game seven. He went to the end with Pacers, had a game seven. There's just so many different things, so many classic moments that came in the postseason. I just can't put anyone in that class with MJ, but I put LeBron at a solid number two. I totally get that. And you also get the feeling that LeBron himself is probably pretty comfortable with that as well, which is pretty cool. And I want to ask you, have to, where does Reggie Miller stand in your consciousness? Well, um, I had three guys that, you know, superheroes for me growing up, uh, guys who I thought could almost walk on water a little bit. Um, one was uh, Michael Jackson, I'm just be honest. Um, and I remember the time video, I thought he really did turn into sand. Michael Jordan was another one, and then Reggie Miller was another. Um, and it was the clutch moments from Reggie, and we know those great moments uh, against the Knicks at Madison Square Garden. That's why I think it's kind of um, funny and a little bit poetic that I grew up not necessarily liking the Knicks growing up, Pacers, Knicks, and those playoff rivalries. And then as an adult, I joined the next next organization with Yes Network, and it's still okay to not really like the Knicks. So I, I, I like that <laughs> the way my, my journey is somewhat uh, uh, gone there. But 
uh, Reggie's moments in Madison Square Garden, those classic moments and uh, moments against the Bulls, all those type of things. Just it was like pulling a rabbit uh, out of a hat. Um, that classic game five between the Nets and the Pacers back in 2002, where Reggie hit a you know that one crazy shot that wouldn't have counted if we if we had uh, replay today. But that crazy shot to send to overtime. He dunked on like four Nets players in that uh, overtime period. It was just a uh, classic game. So. Those were guys that um, uh, were superheroes to me. Jordan, you know, clearly, you know, the better player. But Reggie just had this, this, um, this, this feeling in dramatic moments that you just felt like he was just going to take things over. And uh, I really loved that growing up as a kid. You know, and flashing through my brain is <laughs> pics of poor Patrick Ewing. No love from MJ. No love from you. <laughs> right, 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 exactly, exactly. And you know what? As I got older, I, I appreciate. You know, it's you know we ripped the Knicks and stuff like that, but I really appreciate that generation and seeing how physical those playoff series were. So uh, the Charles Oakley, you know, uh, my guy uh, Ewing, you know, rooting for what he's doing at, at Georgetown. Uh, John Starks, I couldn't stand him, uh, but I just have an appreciation for that <laughs> for that generation now. It's just funny how time kind of changes those feelings. <laughs> So funny. Well, maybe not so funny, but it is interesting because a lot of Jordan fans, etc., don't really necessarily love Mr. Sparks. <laughs> no, no, not in, at all. In this area, in our in our New York area, yeah. That's right. Okay, I've got one for you, Nancy. Okay. Who is your Who is your favorite athlete? Who got you into baseball? That's such an easy one. <laughs> I had a dad that. You know, my mom wasn't fond of this, but hey, he took me out of school sometimes to take me to sporting events, okay? So that's how it went. I was the oldest. I have a little baby sister. She was with my mom. I was daddy's girl. That's the way it goes. <laughs> so um, long story short, I have a photo of myself. I couldn't dig it out. It's probably at my mom's house. But I have, I'm wearing a Don Mattingly t-shirt and I'm in the bleachers. And at Yankee Stadium, and then there's another time where I'm in the upper deck behind home plate. Of course, it's the old Yankee Stadium. I didn't go anywhere without my Mattingly gear. That's just the way it was, okay? <laughs> Posters in the room, the whole business. You can imagine it all. Cut to the early 2000s. He's the bench coach, right, for the Yankees. And um, I'm ready for it. You know, I'm ready for it. I, I, I've interviewed tons of guys. You know how it goes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Came around the corner. I wasn't, I wasn't expecting it. I'm inside the clubhouse. I, was, I knew I was to interview him that day, but I hadn't seen him enter the room. And I turned around, and he was right there. And I just stopped for a second. And he said, hi, I'm Don Mattingly. <laughs> Yeah, okay, all right, I'll just get it out of the way right now. You're my favorite guy, you're my guy, you're the reason I love baseball. All right, let's get down to business. That's my story. <laughs> I love those moments where you, um, where you get to have a conversation with people that you, uh, that you grew up watching, grew up appreciating, um, and uh, it's just, it's just a, you know, a reminder of how cool of a gig this is and, and the opportunities that we get to. And I know that with all that's going on in the world, sports can seem what, somewhat in, in, insignificant in some, in some respects, but it also, what we're going through speaks to the significance and to, and to the escapism and uh, how much fun and that camaraderie and people coming together and, and cheering on a team or cheering against the team or whatever it may be. Uh, I know a lot of folks missed it and I know we can't wait to get back, but. Uh, moments like that, that's, that's, that's one of the reasons I, I, I love what we do, this. So true. And there's so many lessons in all of it. You pursue what you love and you meet people that you really look up to, like Don Mattingly. And not only do they not disappoint, but they surpass everything you could have ever hoped that they would be. And they teach you things. And when you're young, you don't even realize that lessons are being bestowed. But later, you get it. Yes. Michael. <laughs> Great to visit with you. Love to the family. Hope everyone's doing well, right? Yes, yes. And same to you, same to you as well. Same to you as well. <laughs> Thank you so much. And I share your sentiments. We all do. We can't wait to get back to our new normal, and we look forward to it. Michael, really good to see you. Take care. See you soon, my friend. Thank you, Nancy.